Alrighty folks, um, as we can see, hopefully, we took the land yacht to the car wash and uh, it's made a big difference to things and uh, certainly brought up the paintwork even though the cats have been uh, putting their paw marks back on it. So, um, where are we at? Well, we're currently charging. Uh, we're plugged in here on the uh, 62196 Type 2 uh, socket and uh, in on our charging point. So, um, just back from a test drive. I'm doing a couple of test drives this weekend and uh, I have to say that I'm absolutely flabbergasted and shocked at the way that this car actually handles. Um, I had a lot of people suggesting over the course of this project that the E39 just uh, wouldn't make a very good EV and wouldn't be this and wouldn't be that. Well, I don't know what other people expect out of an electric car, but this one's everything that that I can possibly hope for. So let's go inside for a second and uh, show you some more bits. Okay, so we're just uh, plugged in on charge. And on the right, in the red, uh, we have our amp hour counter. It's slowly going back up with my little piddly charger. At the minute, only putting 12 amps into the battery. And on the left, in blue, we have the pack voltage. Now, what I want to do is, just want to put the key onto uh, accessory here. And we can see on the miles count, uh, 34.2 miles. Um, I'm just back from a quick uh, test drive uh, where I took the car out on the motorway. Um, 65 miles an hour for the vast majority of that uh, trip and uh, this thing just basically glided. Uh, for that 34 mile journey uh, we consumed uh, just barely over 60 amp hours and um, I have to say for a car of this size uh, weight and lack of any aerodynamic mods that's quite an impressive feat. Hey guys, well, the one disadvantage of the car presently is I don't have a heater installed, hence I've been kind of had to dress for the occasion because we're still not quite out of the winter yet. Um, that being said, I do have an RM3 fluid heater. Uh, pump and uh, various other plumbing bits to install so chances are I'll end up uh, struggling with the heater during the summer and then spend the uh, next winter sorting out the air conditioning or maybe some other combination thereof so like I've been saying uh, this weekend I've been doing uh, a lot of test driving uh, probably uh, between the two days now with these various trips, probably clocked over just over a hundred miles um, just on shakedown cruises. Um, you know, I in one sense I kind of thought I uh, got this. I kind of thought I, you know, understood the whole EV grin kind of a thing and understood the whole feeling that you get from you know spending a year and a half and hell of a lot of cash and uh, ending up with a um, 2001 car that's uh, probably got about 15 grand into it uh, but it's uh, yeah this is just another wor world uh, the you just drive this thing it um, it just uh, I'm not 
limited by the headway cells as I have been in the tree series um, with this with this car with the CA 180 cells in it uh, there's just you know it's kind of like the it used to be a Microsoft ad uh, where do you want to go to to today well was the uh, tagline from it so I think I've got that tagline now with this thing it's you know where do I want to go today I can um, I've got a solid hundred miles here in this car um, without breaking a sweat um, after that trip the 34 mile trip um, that you just saw there uh, one of the big concerns that I had was motor heating um, even despite the fact that I have the um, the uh, external forced air cooling um, after that trip again of just pretty much motorway driving uh, the bolts that hold in the shoe poles there's two big M16 bolts that hold in each uh, shoe pole into the mo motor casing uh, those bolts were hot uh, but I could I could easily keep my hand on them after the drive so I've rigged up a thermistor onto the or, or original temperature gauge uh, just on the dash here and I'm gonna basically I think I'll just uh, JB weld uh, that thermistor onto one of those um, shoe pole bolts and uh, use that as a general uh, guide to my motor temperature. I have ordered some Melexus um, infrared uh, temperature sensor heads are about fifteen dollars each and I'm gonna possibly at some stage work one of those in so to have it pointing at the uh, commutator uh, just as a means to measure the commutator temperature. It's not that easy to achieve with a fixed temperature device. So, uh, what else do we got to talk about? Well, the E39 um, as a car is extremely large. That's why I call it the land yacht. Um, and it um, there's very little sensation of speed driving this car versus other cars versus even any other um, of the BMs that I've driven. Um, 60 miles per hour in this car feels like doing 40. Um, the road doesn't you you just don't feel as much of the road uh, with this car. Um, as I have done with other cars. Uh, it's very comfortable, it's very smooth. Um, you know, I've got what I got 280 kilograms of lithium cells in this car, and I think that probably on a whole, uh, it's improved the handling of it because it's just really stuck to the road. That being said, today I did have an instance where the ASC kicked in when I kind of uh, gave it a, a little bit too much throttle in second gear going out of a turn. So uh, you actually can spin the wheels even with all of that weight back there. I suppose that's what a 1000 amp controller and uh, a 13 inch forklift motor will tend to achieve. Um, the gearing is very good. Uh, I'm pleased that I went ahead and did all of that messing about over Christmas time with the with the differential and the drive shaft that was a real tour de force uh, but I think it has benefited uh, the car basically I can cruise at 65 in fifth gear now at about 2200 rpm which is a real sweet spot for that motor uh, to still pedal there if I need to perform an overtaking maneuver. Um, what else we got to talk about? I mean I've got a lot of normal car stuff to uh, work on with this car. There's a couple of clunks coming out of the front suspension. Uh, there's a, one of the back, one of the 
<laughs> the driver's side rear light cluster has a bad connector on it so I've got some lights not coming on some of the time and all that nonsense um, I'm probably gonna have to do some brake pads and just all of that normal car stuff but uh, yeah it's definitely been um, EV Grin weekend so that's it I mean this project uh, to get to this point, to get to the car that it performs in this way uh, has been a challenge, but it's been one that's been worth while. Um, you know, I just saw a, I saw a write up to today in a in a I believe a national newspaper. Um, about um, I think it's the Volkswagen E Golf uh, that they have out, and they're giving specifications on that car, and oh, you know the battery had you know this many cells in it, and it was you know this amount of weight, and it could do this mileage, and they you know spent ages uh, optimizing the car, and you know it was just so efficient and all this bloody blah, blah, and the funny thing is the range figure. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, that they actually specified <laughs> this friggin thing will do it and more and this is a big German tank um, I mean like I said earlier I, I've taken a lot of uh, flack um, on fo on various forums uh, oh you know why didn't I pick this car because it's light and it's you know it's aerodynamic and you know why didn't I do this car that car other car why did I pick this friggin' thing? Um, well, I picked it because I wanted to see what would actually happen if I force-fed an electric drivetrain into a big luxury saloon. Uh, what would actually happen? Would I end up with a 20-mile range car that would accelerate like a golf trolley? No. No. Sorry. Uh, that basically hasn't hasn't happened here uh, this is a 100 mile car uh, that can easily tolerate motorway driving now you know I'm sure I'll get people telling me that oh no I can't possibly be right ab uh, about that well um, once I get the car through the NCT I'm going to start driving it full time and um, I will rig up that phone on the dash and I will do a complete drive and I'll run the car empty and uh, you'll be able to see it so as they say seeing is believing so hopefully that will actually play out for me and I won't look like a complete prat but uh, that can happen um, well, I'm going to sign off. I probably got everyone bored to tears and I'm not making a lot of sense. Uh, I generally don't make sense on these videos anyway when I'm not physically doing something and I'm just talking to the damn phone. Uh, Magic Tree helps to distract people. I trust that one's totally dead, so I'm going to have to get a new one. I um, actually did have an interesting uh, conversation with the guys at the local car wash uh, yesterday when they spotted the charging point instead of a petrol filler. Um, so that kind of added a bit of time to the car wash. Um, so right, I am going to sign off, leave you guys in peace and uh, we'll have some more land yacht updates uh, soon. Um, but just as one last thing, um, I'd like to say a special th a special thank you uh, to Anna Kloppenberg from um, New Electric Amsterdam for making the EVTV parts available to us here in Europe. Um, because specifically without the ability to get the cells that I have in this car, um, I wouldn't be doing EVs. Uh, there'd be just no point in it. Um, I'd be doing something completely different. So right, that's me. I'm done. Um, I'm going to finish charging this thing. I'm going to go in and get some rest. So stay cool, guys, and uh, thanks for watching.
talk to you all soon.